Okay, so if you remember from this diagram, we're basically going to start concentrating on the roller system. And when we've finished, it's going to look something like this. But as you remember from this diagram, what we've done is taken the wheel from the servo, which yours may look like this, but it's no problem, the process is going to be the same, and our bearing, and basically wrap them in the inner tube. So let's break it down a little bit on how we're going to do that. So if we take this apart, you can basically see that I've already wrapped this bearing in the inner tube. And that's done quite simply by cutting off a strip, wrapping it around the bearing until it's gone all the way around, marking it off, and then rather than cutting off exactly where I need, cut it off a little bit inside so it's maybe one or two millimeters shorter. And that means that when I wrap it around finally, it's going to be nice and tight and hold in place. Now the second trick is that you want to take a cocktail stick again and apply a very, very small amount of glue onto the end of the rubber. And then you bring the two pieces together, and I admit, this is quite fiddly to align them properly. It might take you a couple of attempts. And again, you'll need to wait a little while for the super glue to dry. So once you've held it in place, you'll find that you'll be able to snap it around the bearing, and indeed the wheel of the servo. And then the really fiddly bit comes by taking an old scalpel blade, dipping it in the super glue, and carefully feeding it in between the gap between the bearing and the bit of rubber and the same will apply with that and that will stop the rubber from slipping off. So the next bit, the reason I've got it in this little vise is so that I can, I can do a test and as you see these two have been aligned together quite closely and it's quite tricky to get that gap just right. So the first thing I should have mentioned was that I need to make a little cruciform to sit this on, and I've just done that using a little bit of old uh, scrap ABS sheet that we had left over from uh, making the box. And also I used a little bit of really thin material just to pack it up to the right height. So basically we've made sure that they're close enough together and at the right height. So the way we'll test where our solder's going to feed through accurately is to get a little bit of the plastic tube, push the solder through it, and then offer it up to the side of the mechanism. And so even though my hand's a little bit wobbly and it's shaking around, basically I've got enough tension with everything so that it's feeding through nicely. And so the trick is that if I'd move the bearing too close, it might be too tight and not go through. And similarly, you don't want to back it off too much, else it'll be too slack and the solder will continue to slip. Now, you'll have to make sure that you use the same type of solder as at the minute, there is no adjustable mechanism. We could maybe look at that in future. But for now, we're going to try and glue things permanently in place, which I'll do after this. The second thing is, although my hand was a little bit wobbly offering up the solder, it's actually a lot better if we we basically create a tube and fix it in place with these two little arms. So again, they're just made from a little bit of scrap, again a piece of tube, and I've actually used another little bit of the same tubing to hold it in place like that, and then by the time I put two of these together, it'll fix like that. And that's basically what I'm going to go away and do now.